Hi guys, Pepper Brown here, and uh, everybody keeps asking me, uh, what should I practice? What should I practice? What should I practice? What should I practice? Man, I want to get good. I want to practice. What should I practice? Okay, so this question gets asked so many hundreds of times a month that uh, I have to review some stuff with you guys, and uh, I'll just take you through it, okay? So what we do is... Uh, download this file uh, guitar daily practice routine okay and the latest revision is uh, april 22nd 2010 uh 4 10 and um it looks like this okay you guys can see that what well, we have our modules we got one one module here one module here module down here module up here module here and a module here there's seven modules here okay seven modules okay now uh this is this was designed many 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 years ago decades ago in fact because uh i had all this stuff used to practice my my daily practice routine i didn't have it in columns i had it all written out by hand on like three or four sheets taped together on the wall and I used to practice stuff every day, and I'd stay on an even keel by doing the same stuff every day. And that's one of the things that uh, a lot of guys don't understand is you have to practice the same things every day for a long time to get good at them. If you jump around too much and practice different things on different days, you never get good at any of them. And uh, you will get good eventually, but it takes way longer than if you uh, practice the same thing every day for you know like a few weeks you know so this uh, daily practice routine is something that I designed a couple, several decades ago and I've modified it and tweaked 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 it and modified it so you see the latest version is 42210 which is you know two months ago and uh, I have even added another little twist to it since then but it's not important enough to change the uh, the text on there anyway uh, so here's what you do. You just you get this, print this stuff out. I'm just going to take you through it. So you guys are going to be practicing with me today. And I'm just going to show you what a daily practice routine work looks like. Um, you got to, you know, really just sit down and do this stuff. If you do it every day, you'll get good at it. If you, if you skip around and blow off a couple days or whatever, you know, the answer to that, you won't get very much better at anything. And so those of you who are dedicated will listen to the words I'm saying and really put your mind to it and get into some practicing. Anyway, first one, module one. Let's do that. Pick an exercise on each string. Well, can you guys believe this is the most important stuff right here, just doing this? So let's do this right now. Not flat. You know, at an angle. I'm doing scalpel picking. You know, you can do serrow picking if you want. Two on one string. You gotta warm up with this every day. Just warm up with just one string. Now, the only reason I like to stop doing this. Is there's only one one good reason on earth for that, and that is the coffee. You see, this is what what you really got to get used to. Anyway, back at it. So now we're gonna do it on one string. See, I glitched it. All right. I'd give this a good two minutes, at least two minutes straight on this, right? Then go to the next string. Why do we go to the next string? Well, for those of you who played for a long time, you'll notice that each string has a slightly different tension. And you gotta get used to all the different tensions really, really well, okay? We go to the second string. Just do this. 
We're just going to do this. So you guys are going to be practicing with me, alright? Let's see how good you do. Let's see how well you can practice this basic stuff that I do pretty much every day. I teach all my students to do this every day. The ones that do it every day get real good. The ones that don't, don't. It's real simple. You do these every day, you get real good. You don't have the patience for it, you can't stick to it, you will suck forever. Okay, now we've been doing that one for about one minute. Now, go to the next string, third string. Now what I like to do sometimes is roll off the treble just a hair. Make it a little more mellow to the ear. Because it's just a physical workout we're trying for. We're not trying for any super hyper speed yet. It's just the beginning of the practice, okay? So we're doing this on the third string. Third string now, right? How long can you do this? How long can you sit here and practice this stuff? How many minutes straight can you do? Can you go five minutes? Can you go 10 minutes? Can you go 15 minutes? Can you go 20 minutes on one string? See how good you do. Alright, that's the third string right there. Speed it up a little bit. Now what I used to do is also try different places on the string to hear what it sounds like. Let's go to the fourth string. Boring, huh? Well, all you guys want to get good. You want, you want, you want, you want, you want. Teach me this, teach me that. You got to do this. Just this. Starting out your practicing. It's boring, huh? Too bad, huh? That's the way it goes. This is how you practice. I'm showing you guys how to practice. You start by doing this every day. Every day. Every single day for the rest of your whole life. Every day for the rest of your life. This is what you do every single day. You don't like it? Don't do it. Don't complain to me that you suck. Don't complain to anybody that you suck because... You only suck because of a lack of effort. Remember the slogan. A lack of effort will give you a lack of results. So you got to put out the effort. you got to do this every day. Are you still are you still hanging in there with me, you guys? I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm barely getting started here. I'm not even hardly awake yet. You know, i gotta, I got to drink coffee. This is how you warm up. It's not barely even warm up. It's just how you get from frozen solid to uh, cold. This is frozen solid to cold. This is not warmed up. This is frozen solid to cold. We're barely getting started. Let's keep it up on one string. I'm making this video so you guys can practice along with me and see how what you really have to do. You guys try this shit for 10 seconds. That ain't gonna cut it, man. You know that. Try for 10 seconds, try for 20 seconds. That is not gonna cut it to make you any better.
Okay, let's go to the A string, the fifth string. Slow it down a little bit if you want. Just get warmed up on your right hand, that's all. That's all we're doing, just simple stuff. You gotta do it every day. This is it, we're, we're at module one, exercise one, dudes. Barely getting started. You guys can't hang with this, you suck. Quit playing guitar, go sell it. Serious. Parents are always asking me after their kid comes in and spazzes out for their lesson, well, how is he doing? And I just tell them, needs a lot of work. And they're like shocked and baffled that I'd say something like that. Everybody wants to hear that they're doing really good and everything's all happy and we're all fine with it. Just like the BP oil spill. Everybody just wants to hear, oh, they're getting it cleaned up. It's no problem. We'll just get it cleaned up and everything will be fine. But you guys know the reality of that thing is that that thing's gonna be leaking like a sieve for a long time. And it's gonna ruin the entire ecosystem of the Gulf of Mexico, which is gonna destroy almost all the species down there. You know, I mean, aside from the economic cost, the environmental cost to the planet is just astronomical. And it's going to take them years to clean that shit up. You know it and I know it. But the media keeps portraying it as, oh, don't worry. They'll get it done. They're, they're going to put a relief well in by August. Okay. Same thing. Everybody wants to hear what they want to hear. Parents want to hear how good their kids are doing when their kids are absolute klutzy, retard, suck monsters. They don't want to hear the truth. Nobody wants to hear the truth. Nobody. You want to hear how good you're doing. Well, you guys, I'm here to tell you, you guys aren't doing good. You guys are sucking really bad. I mean, I get these videos sent for me. You guys are sending me stuff. I send out videos of stuff for you guys to practice. Nobody does it. I send out stuff for you guys to practice. Nobody does it. I send out backing tracks. Out of 100 people, one guy sends a response. That's because you guys are weaklings. Pure and simple. You are guitar weaklings. You are weaklings. And you suck. You suck like you don't even know how much you suck. And I'm here to tell you that you totally fucking suck. You guys just suck. Face it. Face up to the fact that you cannot do this every day. Just face up to it. You barely can. Some of you can. Maybe five out of 500 guys can sit there and do this. I'm just barely getting, you know, going from frozen solid to cold. You know, I'm not even warmed up yet. This is, this is how I practice. You guys want to practice? Let's practice. Let's, let's practice. Sit down and do it. Oh, the phone's ringing. Oh, you got to check your email. Oh, yeah, bullshit. Get rid of all that. Turn off the computer. Unplug the internet. You know what I'm saying? You got a five-hour time period in the day. You ever wonder why you're only effective for about 40 minutes of it? It's because you have no concentration skills. Because you were born and raised to flit about and not pay attention to anything very seriously. That's how you were raised as a child. So it's all gonna change. If you're gonna get good on guitar, you guys are gonna be a pro level player. You're not gonna be able to do it unless you can just do some real basic practicing stuff. I'm still on the A string. Are you guys still with me on the A string? All right, now let's go to the E string. All right, I'm, I'm starting to get unfrozen here. <clears throat> Oh, drink some more coffee. You gotta have that. Now let's go to the E string. I'm muting a little bit. I like the way it sounds a little bit slightly muted. Okay. How long have we been doing this? A couple minutes? You guys watching the clock? We're still on exercise one. We're still on exercise one. You guys hanging with it? Can you guys do it? 
Some of you guys say you have eight hours a day to practice. What should I practice? How long have you been doing this? Can you guys do this? Now don't get me wrong, if you guys can do it and you're hanging in there with me, good for you, you know, you're on your way. But the vast, 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 huge, massive majority of people out there can't even do this at all. I mean, they last maybe two minutes tops on this whole thing. Too bad. You were raised in a world of fast food. You were raised, you were brought up to punch seven numbers on the phone and 20 minutes later, somebody in a red and white striped shirt shows up with a pizza. That's what you were raised, that's what you're used to. Microwave ovens are instant gratification. Everything on YouTube is instant gratification. All these guys want to learn how to play on a highly professional level, and they all say they do. Can't do it unless you put in the time. I'm barely getting started here. What are we doing here? Just the first exercise. We're on the E string still. Are you, are you with me? Lighten up the muting a little bit. Try to sound accurate. Try to get it accurate. What you want to do is you want you want to try to get both directions of the pick sounding exactly the same. In other words, you want your downstroke to sound exactly like your upstroke. That's how you perfect your technique. However, way you do it, you do it. Some people hold the pick sideways, whatever. It really doesn't matter in the long run. You know, I just teach sarod and scalpel picking. Because that's how I do it. That's how I learned it. That's how I taught myself. You know, so that's how I teach it. And a lot of guys are real successful with it, so I stick with it. There's other ways to pick, there's tons of other ways, but the bottom line is you gotta sit down and do it like this, you know. There's there's not a way that you're gonna be able to get out of doing this if you want to get good. You're not gonna be able to bypass this. You're not gonna be able to. You have to do this. You have to do this every day for the rest of your life. This is what you gotta do. Too bad, huh? You gotta shut off all the distractions. Sit in your room and practice. Shut off all the distractions. Shut them off. Shut off your cell phone. Quit texting your stupid buddies all day long. Don't log into the internet. Don't waste your time. Turn off the TV, turn off the VCR. Oh, I said VCR, that was from the old days. Turn off your DVD player. Just gotta dig in and do it, you know? Now we're still on the low E string. You know, I had a student one time uh, who used to love to take uh, his guitar and go sit in a Starbucks and buy coffee and sit there at the Starbucks and practice these exercises. I think for two or three hours he'd sit there at Starbucks. And all the little citizens would show up at Starbucks. He'd drive them nuts because he'd sit there and do this, drinking one one you know venti coffee after another. Actually, he was getting really fast at picking because of it. But anyway, he would drive people nuts. He didn't care. The managers kicked him out more than one time for doing this. They made him sit outside, way off in the corner, and do this. He didn't care. getting good at it now see so this is what you got to do go down to Starbucks sit there sit off in the corner take your coffee take this daily practice sheet with you put it on the table put some kind of paperweight on you, your keys or whatever and sit down and just go through this stuff now we're still on the E string right okay are we done no because now we're gonna go back to the A string go back the other way <laughs> now you know I'm starting to be un become unfrozen not really too totally frozen here yet. We're just starting to become unfrozen here. Okay, are you guys with me? You hanging tough? Let's go to the D string. I'm speeding things up here just for you pansies. Go to the D string, huh? Just gotta do this stuff, man. I mean, I'm I'm rude. I'm sarcastic. 
you know, I have foul language, which I'm trying to correct mostly, but, you know, once you develop your style of speaking, it's hard to correct. All you guys that use the F word all the time know what I'm talking about. It's hard to stop doing that until you offend the wrong people. <laughs> then you remember. It's funny how pain has a way of enforcing our memory, doesn't it? I think Anthony Robbins said it really succinctly and correctly when he said more people will go way out of their way to avoid pain than they will to gain pleasure. If you think about that, that's really true. Madison Avenue and all the marketing geniuses know that. That's why they have these sales and say, this sale ends in 24 hours. Don't lose out. Because they know that people are afraid of losing something, whether they are more afraid of that than they are of putting out effort to gain something. So people are afraid of losing something more than they are trying to work towards gaining something. The whole world works like that. That's why we've got credit cards, you know? buy something now and not have to worry about losing the sale price rather than be disciplined and save up for it and, and buy something when you really can't afford it. It's a hard lesson for all of us, you know, myself included. You know, you're trying to uh, curb anything that you do as far as spending money and you realize that credit cards are the trap because it's money sitting there that you can use but they nail you with all the interest and the huge amounts of things, huge amount of rates that they charge and due dates and late fees and on and on and on. So they make a lot of money off people because they know that humans basically function the way they do. And all the people that sell stuff know that people are afraid of losing something. So they mark it with a deadline. You know, they mark the sale with a deadline so they people rush in there and get it. Now let's go back to the G-string. Are you guys still hanging with this? Are you on the G-string again? string here reposition my arm a little bit now you can stop and shake it and rest it for a second if you really are hurting you know if you guys can't do this you know don't 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 burn yourself out on it i'm just showing you you know you guys want to practice here's what you got to go through you know I'm, I'm doing these videos in real time showing you how i practice 
how everybody who's a pro really practices that. Not just me, but lots of guys who are really professional. This is how they practice, you know? You just set aside that time every morning and know that you're going to spend the three hours straight, four hours, whatever you got, two hours, working on your stuff. You want to become a pro, you know, that's the way it is. There's no way around it. You can't escape it. You know, now we're going to go back to the Eastern. See, here's the clock. So I'm on half a cup of coffee, right? But this is a big cup, huh? This is a big one. All right, that's the clock right there. One cup equals X amount of time, right? All right. Back to the E string, right? Now, for those of you guys who, who uh, think this is way ultra boring, of course it is. Of course it is. It's boring. But you have to do it. You have to practice this way because you're working on your technique for all your other styles of playing, you know? If you want to spice things up, here's what I suggest. Now, we went through from one to six and then six to one again. That's one time through. I like to go through it a couple, three times, you know? But let me insert here another way to practice. What we can do is, I like to do this. I like to do uh, these little sort of neoclassical style patterns. And I teach these to a lot of young guys who who love that neoclassical style. And you would just hit the open string, down stroke, and then we're putting our finger on the fourth fret, up stroke, and then the pinky on the down stroke. So it's gonna go like this. Now why does that feel weird? Why? Because down up is a binary pattern right down up it's a two item pattern right down is one up is two but we have three notes one two and three notes right so you've got a weird synchronization going on don't you you got a two note pattern on the right on the right hand with a three note pattern on your left so everything's got to skip like one note every time you go through it so we're going down up down up down up down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up. I have a lot of guys who do this who do it real sloppy. I try to get them to clean it up. Then go up a fret. Two frets. Back down. I like to do two strings. Thank you. 
Okay, then you can do four notes. Okay, so four notes is like open is one, two, now I go to the fifth fret, three, and then four. You go up one more fret. Uh, you guys don't pay attention here. This is what happens. I show this to a lot of people, and then they get it wrong because they're not paying attention. When you go to the fifth fret to the next one, you go a whole step, then a half step. So many guys just do this pattern, half step, whole step, and then do this. It's not really the same key. You can do it that way if you know what you're doing, but we're just doing this scale. Now here's two whole steps. I'm doing this in real time so I can show you guys. This is how you have to practice. You just keep doing it. This is how you do it. Just over and over again. Guys, you're kind of nuts, doesn't it? Too bad. Too bad. You want to get good, don't you? You must not want it bad enough. Then you go to two strings. as fast as you can get it accurate really okay now the next step is uh you know that's just one scale it was like uh the a harmonic minus scale over e you know, and then uh, we did that same pattern on the second string. 
the next step is uh, what I like to do is uh, play some several scales. You know, let's pick a scale. Let's say E major, which is cool, and go up one string on E major. So you're going like this: E, F sharp, G sharp, A, right? And then B, C sharp, D sharp, E, right? Doing on both strings. Okay, now we're not doing the same pattern because we're sticking to the E major scale. So this the string, the B string has to have the notes of the E major scale on it. So we're going B, C sharp, D sharp, E, right? That's uh, F sharp, G sharp, right? Right? A, B. Two, two strings, so we're going E major scale. Same, right? Then you gotta go. Figure out your fingering for that. Thank you. 
So that's two strings of the E major scale. Uh, and you want to go three strings. You have to pick scales that, uh, you know, the open strings are part of the scale. In the key of E major, the G open string is not in the key of E major. It's in the key of E minor. So you can modify this by playing G sharp like that, but not playing the open string. So you got to go like this. So you might want to play like this. That's three notes on each string. Or you can play four notes. Like that. So you hit the lowest note, the highest note, the middle note, and then the lowest note again. So you have to sort of figure out ways to use the other strings if they're not in the key. You may want to change key. Okay, let's go to an E minor scale, which is a G major scale, right? So we got E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. And on the B string, what do we got? E or B, uh, C, D, E. F sharp, G, A, B, right? So you got. Then the G string, we got G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So you can do a pattern on an E minor scale using the open G. Try to keep it clean. Thank you. 
it's just three strings, okay? So we're just doing alternate picking exercises. We're still in exercise one. So those are those are some of the ways that uh, I like to go uh, up one string on picking exercises. You know, uh, picking exercises on each string. You go up and down a scale, okay? Now I use D major and E minor. Uh, we'll do that for the next two weeks straight. And then the next key would be what? Do something else. Do like A major. Do like C major. You know, change keys every couple weeks if you want to learn better on the, you know, where the notes are on the neck. But do it every day for a couple weeks. Don't, don't keep changing around every day. Because you won't get good at it if you change it every day. You have, to, you have to stick with it, stick with it, stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. And it requires a lot of dedication. It requires a lot of discipline to sit down and do this. I mean, how long have we been doing this? Just a little brief amount of time. I'm still going from frozen solid to cold. I'm not even warmed up yet, all right? You guys want to know how to practice every day? I'm taking you through how to practice, okay? Here's how it works. We're practicing. You guys are supposed to keep up with me. You guys want to be pro players. You keep telling me this. Well, here's how you do it. You got to do it like this. And there's guys that practice way more than me. I mean, really. There's young guys coming up now that they put in 10 hours a day practicing. They're going to be superstars, you know. A uh, couple guys in, to, 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 to uh, really catch my attention lately are, uh, I have a couple newfound friends. I mean, Rusty Cooley is a tremendous, tremendous player. He plays a lot different style of picking. He plays a stiff arm style. I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying, you know, this guy's really worked it to where he can play really fast, clean. Everything he does is clean. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm luckily, luckily, lucky he has uh, sort of uh, subscribed to my page and really uh, sort of chit-chatted a couple times. But anyway, uh, the whole point is that uh, you guys got to practice for a long period of time on one thing for a lot of days in a row, a lot of weeks in a row to get good at it. And so many people fall short of knowing how to practice or even disciplining themselves to practice for more than 5, 10, 15 minutes. A lot of kids just pick up the guitar and they start strumming chords. You know, and their parents think, oh, he's practicing. Oh, oh he's, he's going to get good. You know, so many parents don't know about music. There's a lot of parents that, that also who have uh, taken lessons when they were growing up in piano or cello or violin, and they've had legitimate teachers. Those are the ones who know what practicing is more all about, and they can di you know dictate it to their kids. Uh, for the most part, a lot of kids don't have parents like that, so their parents don't know what they should be practicing. They go to the strip mall and take lessons from their guitar teachers, and their guitar teachers are such as lame nitwits that they don't know how to teach them how to practice. All these guys know are a bunch of rock and metal songs, and they show them how to do that very badly. And they go home and practice that, and they wonder why they suck after five years of playing. You know, they still can't play anything. I get tons of emails from guys who tell me, I've been playing for 20 years, man. I didn't realize that, but I really suck. Yeah, of course. You suck. You suck. You suck. You suck. You guys all suck. 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 You suck. Because you learned wrong. You learned from nitwits nitwits and total nitwits that's the problem you grow up in a culture of instant gratification and you were trained by nitwits get used to the fact that you now are waking up to that and then here i'm here to tell you that there's a better way you just got to stick to your guns you got to do it you got to be disciplined you got to grind it you got to be really putting that energy into practicing you know stop associating with nitwits you know Get off the cell phone. Stop texting your stupid buddies, you know. What are you guys talking about anything? Anyway, anything important? I sincerely doubt it. Okay, so that's just this exercise one here. Picking exercises on each string. Uh, what I like to do is also uh, use pentatonic scales with these. And uh, the way I do it is uh, I like to do like open strings with the pentatonic scales. So what we have here is... Uh, like an A minor pentatonic scale. If we extend the pattern out like this. And 
then add the open strings to it, so you're going. So I'm doing a three notes, three notes, three notes, three notes, three notes, three notes. The only string that's going to sound slightly odd is that B string, but in the key of A minor, B is the ninth of the A minor chord, so it's still in the same key. It's not a tonal gravity note like an A you know, or an E. Those are like really strong gravitational notes for the key of A, but the B is in the key, so you can get away with it, you know, whatever, you know, you, you guys make up your own exercises these are just some ones i made up all right for you know three decades ago all right so we're doing a pick it's still this is just a picking exercise on one string so we're going like this now go to the a string we're using the a minor pentatonic scale to do this over and go to the E string. Oh, you got E there. Notice I don't play more than that on the B string. I'm not going. I'm just going like this. Right away to the E string. So your ear hears that E in the key of A minor. strong gravity note, isn't it, as opposed to B. Well, there's going to be jazz guys that say, oh no, uh, B is the ninth of it, and a ninth chord. Here, listen to that. Okay, yeah, it is. It's a nice chord, isn't it? A minor ninth chord, excuse me. Up here. For this picking exercise, we're treating B as kind of a gloss over open string. So we're going to go like this. Now this is not a scale exercise. This is a picking exercise. So yeah, screw it up. Also, as a approach two strings like this. Picking exercise. It's not a scale exercise, it's a picking exercise. Using a scale. Why? Why? Why are we using the scale? Because you can use this stuff in your solos, man. If you want to play a solo and you're in the key of A, what's wrong with going like this? know some kind of open string a little intro riff or descending riff whatever use everything that you know in all your soloing okay 
exercises turn into patterns that you can use for soloing and I'll show you a lot more of that later on but we're using this as a picking exercise to get our picking warmed up now I've gone from frozen solid to cold so I'm still cold right now this is cold cold picking exercises right like cold fusion good name for a band huh cold fusion anyway <clears throat> here we go take two strings like this How do you do two strings here? Well, you got to change the pattern to this, right? So the pattern is going to be. Are you with me? These are picking exercises, right? Picking. Picking. See how fast I can go. Ah, what does the clock say? Three quarters. Can't do it yet. Got to have at least two or three of these before we want to go real fast, right? You guys know that. All right. Here we go. We're doing two strings. We're, you know, dudes, we're still. We're still on module one, picking exercises on each string. This is exercise number one. We're still on exercise one, taking you through some daily practice. You want to know what to practice? I'm showing you what to practice. You guys, this is daily practice. You want to devote your time to practicing the guitar. This is how you do it. I'm showing you the mechanics of practicing. How long have we spent on this so far? You know? Do you care? Does it matter? Where do you, where do you gotta go? What do you gotta do, huh? You gotta go drop some acid and go stare at the Texaco sign for about four hours now or what? That's what we used to do in the 70s, man. <laughs> sorry, moms. Sorry for that comment. I really am. I'm, I'm really sorry. All right. But uh, those of you who grew up in the 60s and 70s know what I'm talking about. All right, we're still on this. We're still on each string, so we're doing that one. You can keep going up. Or go to the next string. Now here on the A string, we got to go. And then to fit the pentatonic patterns, right? is going to look like this. It's a picking exercise, folks. Cross like this, and then jump up here, or do three strings like this. take it at an angle like this so you got one note or two notes on the E string and one note on the A string two notes on the E string one note on the A string two notes on the A string one note on the D string two notes on the A string one note on the D string so you go that's an easy hand pattern for your left hand. Go back and forth like this. Go 
up the whole scale like that. angle then we have the reverse angle that's two notes on the A string and one note on the E string two notes on the A string one note on the E string using the A minor pentatonic scale so we're going now we we'll go to the D string two notes on the D string one note on the A string Two notes on the D string. take those patterns and combine them together so you've got this angle going up and this one also so you got like an X pattern right like an X now if you guys are doing those X patterns like this you know you could do that still but here's another idea behind those X patterns where you can do this with pentatonic scales and use those ideas in your solos too so you got picking exercise. You can use these little ideas though in your solo. Now the next thing is uh, don't forget every time you do an exercise like this we can do it like this right and get some real angular creative ideas out of it but don't forget since these are picking exercises these are picking exercises. These are not scale playing exercises, but we are using scales for the picking exercises. Let's continue on with the idea with a picking exercise and do this. But now we're gonna go double up on it. Thank you. 
So let's just uh, get you started with some picking exercises uh, using the pentatonic scale. Now that was A minor pentatonic. There's a lot of other scales you can use. A uh, G minor pentatonic is real good. Right here. Now what strings in the, are in the key of G minor that we can use? Well, we can use A's in the key, D's in the key, G's in the key. B belongs to a G major tonality, not a minor. Minor has a B flat. So B, B, B natural probably won't work for a G minor. So you got to avoid that B natural string, right? E is uh, the sixth of G minor. It'll still work. It's a little little different sounding well for G minor we've got all these guys uh, who uh, use open strings with G minor like you know you got now the first guy that I figured this out from was of course the great Rishi Blackmore, where he was doing this song. And he had a solo that used it open. He used the open string a lot in his solos, you know. And he did that before on... Uh, uh, highway star as well in the key of D. You guys are wondering where I got these ideas from. Here it is. Richie Blackmore, Highway Star. So that was where, you know, sort of gelled in my mind as a t young teenager. I I heard those solos and tried to figure out what he was doing, you know. I could hear that open string, you know. And I tried doing that stuff, and that's how all this stuff sort of evolved, these exercises into these picking things, you know. Anyway, so we got the G minor pentatonic. <laughs> You can make picking exercises out of all those, and that's just picking exercises on each string, you know, each string. Uh, okay, so now we're going to go on to the second one, picking exercises on adjacent strings. Adjacent means what? Strings that are next to each other, two adjacent strings. So we did a lot of that already with the first one, but now we're going to focus on adjacent. And the way I do it is I hold down this chord. E7 sus4, not E minor, not A7, E7 sus4, make sure it's in tune. So we got uh, 
E7 sus4. We're going to do all downstrokes in both directions. I'm going to repeat that. All downstrokes in both directions. All downstrokes in both directions. So we're going to go down, 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 down. down on my hand. You'll have to too. It's going to look at your hand while you do it. Try all upstrokes in both directions, right? Upstrokes in both directions. You see, you got to work on practicing your upstrokes and your downstrokes. We do these in both directions, you know, both up and down strokes on one chord. Now, you don't have to use this chord, you can use any chord. G, you know, make sure it's a six string chord, you know. Uh, for those of you who get more advanced with this, you can make a chord progression and practice picking over a chord progression. For now, I just use this one chord, doing all upstrokes. for a long time but I'm trying to show all these exercises to you guys and it's hard to compress all this time to spend into just a couple of videos or whatever videos how many videos it takes but I'm trying to convey the idea that it's going to take you the most of the morning to work on all this stuff every day as long as you live this is the way it works if you want to be a pro if you don't have time if you got a day job or whatever uh, if you want to be a pro you still got to make a sacrifice and do it fit in the time when you can uh, I used to read interviews with McLaughlin where he said that he used to be a truck driver back in England and he'd get off work at the end of the day and he said he'd be literally shattered but he'd force himself to work for several more hours on a guitar. So that's what you got to do no matter what your day job is. You got to sit down and work at guitar. If you're going to get good at guitar, you got to practice. Even if you're tired, 
you got to keep working at it and eventually it pays off you know your band starts getting somewhere you can start getting some gigs you know all right so that's all upstrokes we did all downstrokes all upstrokes now we're going to do down up so we're going to go like this down up down up down up Down on the sixth string, up on the fifth string, down on the fourth string, up on the third string, down on the second string, up on the first string. Just gotta do that for five, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, the second thing you do is you need to do two notes per string, like this. for string now again this goes down up down on the E string then up down up on the A string down up down on the D string up down up on the G string down up down on the B string up down up on the E string so you're going down up 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 down It's just the same thing as when you guys study for, for school, study for class. You sit down and read a book, and you read the page, and you get to the end of the page, and you realize, you know, you got to shake it off and read it again because you didn't grasp what the page was telling you, right? You didn't, you didn't click on it. So you got to read it again, you know, or read it slower. Then do it again. Do it three times until you click, right? It's the same thing with anything, especially practicing. You got to do it enough times, enough times, enough times where it feels like you click on it, like you click, you know. So you got to do these, you know, dozens and dozens and hundreds of reps until you click with it, right? And that's the way it is. Okay, now we're going to do four notes per string. So this is an even pattern. So it's one, two, three, four on each string. alternate or serrate I would take this as an opportunity to work on your serrate style Thank you. 
somewhere? You know, you're getting somewhere now? See if it goes. after four five right so you're gonna go one two three four five one two three four five All I can do is to, like, to go up three strings and come back one string and go three. After five, we're going to do six, so it's triple a triple a. So you're going. six we do seven so you kind of count seven or five and two right or four and three you know so we're gonna go one two three four five six seven or we're gonna go one two three four one two three one two three four one two three or we're gonna go one two three four five one two one two three four five one two take your pick you know uh, so here's seven one two three four five six seven Okay, 
So you go for a long time on seven if you can feel that. The important thing is you do these every day, every day, every, every, every day for as long as you live, okay? So that means get up earlier. Make some time in the morning. Do this while you drink your coffee, you know? You got you to gotta put the time in every single day to practice. And you got to practice for a long time. As you can see, it's just like reading a book. You know, you get to the end of the page. You don't remember what you just read. You got to go back and do it again until you click. You got to click with the stuff. And in order to click with it, you got to spend the time. You got to dig in and really spend your time working on stuff until it finally clicks. And then do it again the next day and again the next day. And it all starts to make more sense after a while. It takes a long time for me to connect the dots on certain concepts. And I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot of guys who are in the same boat. Um, the guys who are the, really the best musicians are the ones who can connect the dots quicker and who click better, you know. And everybody's going to be on their different levels, okay. So I'm just here to show you this daily practice stuff. We're still on the daily practice team. We were doing, uh, still on this page here. We just did uh, picking exercises on each string and picking exercises on adjacent strings, okay. So those are the first two, all right. Now, uh, there's more, there's plenty more. The third one is uh, picking exercises on non-adjacent strings. Okay, so what is non-adjacent strings? Non-adjacent strings are non-adjacent. What does the word adjacent mean? Do you guys know what adjacent means? Adjacent means next to each other, so non-adjacent strings means strings that are not next to each other. So we're gonna skip, we're gonna go to the E string, then we're gonna skip to the D string. They're not adjacent to each other, they're separated by one string. Then we're going to go to the A string. Then we're going to skip to the G string. Then we're going to go to the D string. Then we're going to skip to the B string. Then we're going to go to the G string. Then we're going to skip to the high E. So we've got these pairs of strings that we're using, non-adjacent pairs. So we're going to hold on that chord again, E7 sus4, not E minor, not A7, E7 sus4. And we're going to go sixth string, fourth string, Fifth string, third string, fourth string, second string, third string, first string. Again, six, five. I'm sorry, excuse me. Six, four. Six, four. Six, four. Then five, three. Then four, two. Then three, one. So it's going to be like this. We're going to go... And when you come back, here's the important thing. Same exact pairs when you come back. Same exact pairs. Same exact. So coming back, we're going to go 3 1, then 4 2, then 5 3, then 6 4. So again, coming back is 3 1, 4 2, 5, 3, 6, 4. Same pairs going in both directions. So many thousands of students, when they do this exercise, they go 6, 4, 5, 3, 4, 2, 3, 1. And they come back by going 2, 1, 3, 2. And I tell them over and over again, no, 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 no. That's not the exercise. That's a different exercise. This exercise comes back 3, 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6, 4. So we're doing those pairs of strings in both directions. So we're going like this. Now you start out doing all downstrokes. Do a little muting to get used to muting, holding your wrist down too. Strokes. And then down up alternate if you will
next step is what we're going to do is uh, I like to do this while we do that skipping string with one note on each string. I like to use go from the pick only to pick middle finger, right? So pick middle finger, right? Teaches you some chicken pickings technique, right? See what I'm doing here? People call it hybrid picking, whatever you want to call it. Picking fingers. Between doing this one one time or two times, right? See, one time, two times, one time, two times. Just a little thing I added. You can just do it one time if you want to, just like this. pick two three so we're going to pick on the sixth string middle finger on this fifth string the a string and then the third finger on the d string so we're going to go like this just stick on the six five and four for now just like this to get this down Now go to the next group of three strings. Next group. Next group. So we're going to go one group at a time. Lastly, we're going to do the pinky as well. So pick two, three, four, like this. So you're going to have to get used to that. So you got to do six, five, four, three. groups at a time. So that's basically taking you through just a little bit of time on practicing module one, picking exercises on each string, picking exercises on adjacent strings, picking exercises on non-adjacent strings, and then we doubled with pick two, pick three, pick two, three, and pick two, three, four exercises. So those are the first four exercises in module one. And you guys got to see, you know, how much time it took to get through that stuff. Uh, I could do way longer than that really on my own, but this is condensed for the video. So hang in there. You got to practice you guys. Uh, 
If you want to have questions on all this stuff, put it in the forums online on my website. Uh, everybody can answer those questions and read them. Anyway, stay tuned for the next video. We're, not, we're just getting started. We're going to do Module 2, the next one, and then Module 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Seven modules. You know, you guys are going to put some time in to practice if you want to get good. But this is a daily practice. Okay, so Pepper Brown over and out for now.